just to wrap all this up, the other thing the Lord asked me to talk to you about this morning is the fact that he has nothing against you. Nothing. And he told, he told me, because I, I mean, I can't mess this up. I was, I, was, I was three feet from him. He said, there's no one up here in heaven hindering you, stopping you, talking against you, or limiting you. No one. He said, I've never limited you. Who told you you can't do that? And I got to thinking about it. Yeah, who did? I realized that I was waiting on God, and he was waiting on me. Okay, so getting back to this room. He took me from the throne to this room down the hallway. And I'm in this room, and I told you there's no furniture, nothing. It was just glory. Now, what I, when I walked in there, I looked. Jesus was in there because he went in first. He turned around and looked at me to see my, you know, see my reaction. And I go, whoa, what is this room? Because it, it, it was like nothing I've ever felt before. And I was just at the throne. And I walked on the blue sapphire. It's in Exodus chapter 24, verse 10. For those of you who are waiting for scripture for everything I say, I have scripture for everything. Exodus 24.10, God brought his own platform down and stood on it in front of Israel. Because he said, I have a problem when I step and touch the earth. It, it starts quaking and breaking up. And when I speak, cedars split. He said, so I have to bring my own platform that can handle the holiness because the world is under a curse. So I bring my own platform. Well, that's in the throne room. Okay, so I'm on all of that, and then he takes me to this room, and I said, Jesus, what is this? He, he looked at me. He said, when you walked into this room, you walked into the middle of the Father's heart. I felt love like I have never felt before. I have, there's no rejection. There's no depression. There's no doubt, no fear. And then he said something to me that I don't want to tell you because I've not said this before publicly but Jesus said don't wait for the next move of God because you are the next move of God Amen. what he said I'm moving in you and if you yield see Smith Wigglesworth he was asked Smith Wigglesworth asked why have you gone to five denominations he said well he said, I, I went to the denomination, each of them, because God was moving. He said, when God kept moving and they didn't, I found myself outside the denomination. So I found another place where God was moving. And when they stopped moving and God was still moving, I, I found myself outside that denomination. He said, it happened five times. He said, I just keep moving with God. And I find myself outside. <laughs> He also said, show me a man in wit's end corner with, you know, at the end of his rope, wit's end corner. And he said, now I'll show you a man that God can use. Amen. He said, God mowed me over until he got rid of me. <laughs> now, that's a man that used to change the diapers for his wife while she was preaching. Polly. What happened to the man who was changing the diapers, watching the kids while she would preach, that when she died and didn't, didn't say goodbye, that he pulled her out of the casket, threw her against the wall, and, and resurrected her. What happened to a man like that? I'm telling you. I just told you what happened. It's not about you. But the Holy Spirit is moving. And what we need to do is we need to fall upon the rock, lest the rock fall on us. We need to go to the cross. You see, he gave me... He, I don't have time to go through it, but he gave me the ingredients for this next move. He told me, he said, he said, Kevin, you go back and you let me move through you. But this is what he said. These are the ingredients. And he gave me the eight ingredients of this next move. And I'm going to tell you what. It's just like John the Baptist. He wouldn't get on Christian TV because he had his sermon was only three seconds long. Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Are you kidding me? Do you have anything nice to say? That's what they would say. Because we need, we need 28, 31. We need 28 minutes and 31 seconds. And we need you to say something nice. Well, that's all I got. You want me to pray some more? Okay. Yeah, it's still repent. 
Now listen to me. I'm, I'm, I'm helping you here. You have no idea how much I'm helping you. Because listen to this. Jesus, he said, Kevin, why did the Father give me 40 days of ministry after I died? I go, I don't know. Because <laughs> I always wondered that. There's no CD set for those 40 days of what he did, you know? Think about it. Wouldn't you like to have that? So he asked me this. He said, well, Kevin, if you were given an extra 40 days of ministry, what would you preach on? I go, okay, now I'm tracking with you. So I looked it up. He preached on the kingdom of God. It says it right in the book of Acts. In the first chapter, it says, he preached on the kingdom of God for 40 days. So he had 40 extra days as a gift. Is everybody here? You know, you know he, he, was, he, was, he was walking around for 40 days. Did you, you know that, right? Okay. Did you know there was a lot of people that were resurrected, and they went back home? But all the people in the world say, oh, you know, that really didn't happen. He, he, you know, he, didn't, he wasn't resurrected. Well, you tell those people that got res from the dead. What about all the people like the Josephus and all those people that actually listened, that had the rec- what, that he was teaching and walking around after the resurrection? So I said, okay, why did, you, did the Father give you 40 days more? He said he was paying me back for the 40 days of temptation in the desert. He said, you go back and tell the people that for every harassment day that the devil gives to you, you get a day of ministry under the power of the Spirit. Yeah. 